Welcome back to the show, everyone. Joining me now is People Senior Style Editor Brittany Tallarico is back. And here for the first time, Sean Kavanagh Dowsett, the owner of our favorite British restaurant in New York City, Tea and Sympathy. Welcome, guys. Thank you very much for having us. Hello, excited to be here. Great to have you here, Tea and Sympathy, one of my faves Thank for you. sure. Tell me about the name, the combination of Tea and Sympathy. Why did you come up with that? It actually was a suggestion of a friend of my wife's. Um, there was a fantastic play in the uh, 60s called uh, Tea and Sympathy, written by Robert Anderson, and uh, it just sort of fit with what we're all about. Although we do have a slightly uh, English sense of humor. When people <laughs> come in and start whining about stuff, we always say, sorry, it's actually a misprint. It's actually tea or sympathy. Stop whining <laughs> One or the other yes. then, and they and go you for had the tea. tea. So bad luck, yeah. <laughs> now, Sean, I know firsthand English food can get a bad rap here in, the, in America, can't it? I don't know why. We have amazing, delicious dishes, but you're about to turn that reputation around. You've got some festive holiday treats with you today. Yes. We're about to indulge in irresistible. And Brittany, we're going to be talking style a little later on, but I figured you'd appreciate being part of this tasting, I'm tasting session. There we go. Okay. Happy to be a taste tester. All right, so you have three holiday favorites. Yes. All right, what do we have first? Um, I think uh, one of our first that we're going to um, tuck into, uh, in honor of the Royals, because yeah. uh, they are big fans of these, um, the mince pies. The mince pie. Oh, this is Jeff, by the way, one of our super producers. Say hi, Jeff. This is Jeff, the, uh, <laughs> the uh, world famous uh, mince pie wrangler. Yeah. I'm going to. That's his other title. You. There we go, Oh, my thank love. you. I, I just take one as one uh, you, for no, Brittany. You can have them both. Oh, Don't I can have them both. All yeah. right. I can be greedy. <laughs> have one for afterwards. There we go. Thank served you. With a blo served warm with a blob of brandy butter. Oh, I love that. Now, Brittany, have you had a mince pie before? I have not. I'm very excited. It's my first time. Okay. Molded and married. It's nice to have beautiful <laughs> ladies be excited about something. Um, <laughs> What's in a mince pie? A mince pie, well, they, they, they're technically they're called mincemeat because they used to make them with uh, suet, which is like a rendered beef fat as mm. the fat in the uh, pastry and in, in all the other bits and pieces in it. But it's made with raisins, sultanas, candied peel, mm. uh, molasses and all that. So it's sort of cooked mm. down, it's like a jam, and it goes in these little pies with a short cr crust pastry. We make these on the premises. You can buy store-bought ones, we have those yes. too, but these ones are so popular, I, um, much to the annoyance of our kitchen staff, I have somebody handcuffed to a stove since shortly before Thanksgiving <laughs> because those go out in the hundreds every day. Yeah, how did it become such a, a massive Christmas tradition, the mince pie? I think it was, uh, it, it comes from almost medieval times really where it was like a real treat to get that sort of fruitiness and all that sort of stuff because of course they didn't have refrigeration and they didn't have any of those because it's all, all about making preserves so I think that was a big influence on it but it's a very rich thing and it's also a good thing to uh, soak up some of the alcohol you might be taking for uh, Christmas especially if the in-laws mm. all right so you have to tell us what's the secret to making a truly delicious mince pie like these ones well you've got to get good mince meat you can either make it yourself which is extraordinarily labor intensive because oh. there's all the different ingredients you have to put together or we actually bring in um, mince meat from England ready-made because we wanted to make sure we got it right and then the other thing is the pastry um, a lot of people get pastry wrong in life so it's a proper short crust pastry um, which we make on the premises okay and uh, I've got uh, I feel sorry for the boys in the kitchen because by the end of mince pie season they have sort of concentric rings of uh, blisters on their hands from where they're cutting little bit <laughs> eyes out and all this stuff. All right, so Brittany, the moment of truth. I need to know from you, so my first, first time mince pie -er. First time, and I loved it. Fantastic, it there we great. go. It was great, I love the mix with the butter. Yeah, the brandy butter oh, is Oh, it's a, amazing. I could thing. probably eat that by itself, too. Yes, well, <laughs> I won't mention any names of the crew, but some people have already today. I need a rating from you from one to 10, the mince pie. I'm gonna say nine. Nine. That's a, a good one, nine. starting off nine. well. Okay. I understand, you know, you had to drop a point because it's a shock having your first mince pie. <laughs> but don't worry, we did counselling as well. Amazing. I really liked it. Well, I'm going to, I've had mince pies before. Yes. I'm going to give this a nine as well. Thank you very much. Um, all right, well, what do we have next then? We have another um, famous uh, Christmas treat, uh, which is sort of in, along the same lines in some ways, a bit of uh, Christmas pudding which can also be served with uh, pudding, brandy yeah. butter. It's like a really Thank dense so fruit cake, uh, which is uh, steamed and then served piping hot. Now, 
for safety reasons, we couldn't serve it the way it's normally served. It normally comes to the table on fire. You warm a little brandy and pour that over the top. Yeah, but we didn't want to singe my eyebrows. Yeah, today, and, and also, we? yeah, we didn't want to have a fire marshal standing by and all that stuff. And uh, and if you've had a couple of beverages at Christmas, it's always not necessarily the best idea to have something sort of liquid and burning coming to the <laughs> table. But it does add to the fun. And it's, as I said, just another way of cramming a little bit of alcohol in for Christmas. And it's served warm. This is yeah, warm. So, yeah, so it's steaming hot. Uh, we didn't want you to actually burn your mouths on this, mm. um, but it is rather good, I think. How did it become, sorry, excuse me for eating with my mouth full, but... That's okay. How did it become the must-have dessert uh, on Christmas Day? Again, I think it's such a medieval thing. It's uh, those sort of really dense puddings and, and all of those sort of really rich, sort of Lord of the Manor sort of uh, dishes. Because this sort of food wasn't initially available to... Uh, the great unwashed, as one would describe them, um, the, 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 the populace, <laughs> um, you know, so the, it was basically the Lord of the Manor, the royals, etc., would have access to this for, you know, centuries now. And then uh, as things became more egalitarian, um, some of us not so high born individuals were allowed to taste the finer things in life. Ah. It can take a while to prepare this, can't it? it? Well, you should really get out of it months ahead of time. And months? Should, How many? Should, um, oh, people months. start making them three to six months in advance. Wow. Well, because it's not necessarily just the making of it. You make it and then you let it sit. But then you have to, as with all things, feed it a little bit of alcohol over a period of time. Yeah, <laughs> which say preserves that, it, right? Yes, yeah. oh, preserving it. That's what it's all about. Now, also <laughs> the fact that if you fed it enough alcohol, by the time it comes around to Christmas, you can actually just whistle and it comes walking in on its own. <laughs> <laughs> Like this one did. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah. It wasn't Jeff. It no, walked in by yes, itself. Yes, yeah. It, yeah, it came in under its own steam. So, Brittany, it's on you. It's delicious. I think I'm going to go up a half a point and get a 9.5 here. There we go, 9.5. 9.5, I <laughs> love Heavy it. Bites. Yeah, it's a sultanas or raisins. We call them yep. raisins, right? Yep. I really like that flavor. And it's you, really good, Yeah, right? it's really good. Um, the presentation of it, which I, we saw before, was beautiful. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, it's, I'm very impressed. And this one's actually got, it normally has a, an alcohol in it, like you feed it with a bit of brandy and whiskey and all that fun stuff. But this one's actually made with a bit of Guinness. Oh. So it's got plenty of iron oh, in there for yeah. any pregnant ladies that want to get a little bit of iron in yeah. there. Oh, there wow, that's the secret ingredient. Yeah, yeah. Huh? You can, you can always Guinness. argue that that's an important part of Christmas dinner. Okay. There you go. Well, I'm going to give it a 10. Fantastic. Woo, absolutely well. delicious. Thank you. Warm, amazing, yeah, yes. very tasty. And you, mm. and you, I know you're being very professional. You didn't go this one slathered, slathered in uh, brandy butter. Um, <laughs> I was you know, eyeing, yeah, <laughs> I was eyeing Brittany's <laughs> brandy yes. butter. Uh, I was about me. to I ask. Brandy but... butter. Yes, yeah. <laughs> And then the other things that we brought for you, you know, we have some mince pies and we have uh, um, some cakes that we bake on the premises, like our Victoria sponge cake, named after Queen Victoria, of course. Yeah. And uh, a marmalade cake, which is actually spectacular and made with marmalade that my lovely lady wife makes on the premises. Yeah. So All perfect for yummy. afternoon tea, as the royals love to have their afternoon tea They do like to have afternoon tea. Eve. And also, yeah, and, uh, in honour of their um, German heritage, they tend to have afternoon tea at about one o'clock on Christmas Eve. Uh, actually, about two o'clock on Christmas Eve, I understand. I've never been invited <laughs> maybe next yes well i don't know maybe I'm, my invitation's in the mail <laughs> um but uh, no, that um, they have an afternoon tea so we have scones with clotted cream and jam the finger best. sandwiches coronation chicken named after the uh, sort of days of the raj and um uh, you know an influence of india um tuna salad egg salad all the good stuff and then uh, some more mince pies and scones with cream and jam well amazing okay i'm ready for the final dessert which one is it? Uh, bread and butter pudding, which oh, um, I understand always been a favourite of Princess Diana. Um, it was uh, a very much a comfort food. I remember growing up, uh, I went to boarding school in England and, uh, you know, one of the newer schools. It was built in 1685. Yeah. Um, and and uh, not to be confused with bread pudding, right? No. These are two different things. Yes. No, this is much gooier. It sort of gets a bit gooey and custardy towards the bottom. What's it made with? Uh, it's made with bread, butter, a little bit of cream, raisins, sugar, all the good things in life. And what's the secret to the perfect bread and butter pudding? Um, well, one should not try and make it too frilly, I think. It's mm. got to be dense and moist <coughs> enough. Um, don't overcook it, all that sort wow. of stuff. I mean, we have a warped sense of humour with a lot of our stuff. For instance, um, mm. the, the mince pies uh, next door in our fish and chip shop at Salt and Battery at Christmas, we serve those deep fried as well with oh, a wow. blob of brandy butter on <laughs> because it keeps getting the brandy Very butter indulgent. going across. But, you know, you can always put a bit of clotted cream on the uh, bread and butter pudding. You can put um, brandy butter on it or whatever. And then you can do different flavours of, of bread and butter pudding. You can add it's rum delicious. to it and make it more like the old days of the... Uh, 
the British Navy when uh, mm. people used to be assigned a bottle of rum at the end of their voyage, all the crew. So okay. uh, the throw on some alcohol. Should... Yes. Why not? Well, you know, it's a, it's a holiday. One should be celebrating it one way or the other. <laughs> exactly. So, Brittany, the final conclusion here. I have to say this is my favorite of That's the three. The I'm a big carb girl. I love bread. Yes. <laughs> so I would give this a definitely a 10. Fantastic. If I was Paul Highwood on the Great British Bake Off, I'd shake your hand. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, I would, I would consider it an honor either. Thank you very it's much. It's delicious. I, I had a it. feeling you were going to love this. I love it. I'm going to give this 11 out of 10. Oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah, I'm going for 11. I'm almost up to a full house here. That's fantastic. Absolutely delicious. Well, thank you very much for having us, and I'm glad you've uh, enjoyed the desserts. They yeah. seem to have gone down quite well. Amazing. Yeah, I'm going to be I'm saving this eating. for later, <laughs> that's yeah. for sure. And you've totally turned around our reputation for bad food in the UK. Well, thank you, know, you for that. I think, you know, we are. It, it, there was the days of the Second World War when we had the rationing, and a lot of the American servicemen thought that the uh, sort of rationed food was as good as it gets. But I think for the 29 years this December 23rd that we've had tea and sympathy, I think we've done our bit to sort of prove that wrong. You guys certainly have, yeah. Fantastic. And we'll have you back on with some more British delicacies. Oh, we're not doing Christmas crackers. <laughs> <laughs> next time, next time, maybe after the show. Fantastic. Yeah.